All right, we're going to do another example of a t-test. Uh, we are trying to estimate the mean of a population based on a random sample. Uh, and we have the situation where we've recorded birds um, and how much they want to avoid eye contact. And so we've put um, two, uh, apparently they've painted some eye spots uh, in a room and they're timing how much time birds spend in the room where they can fry freely between those, whether they spend more time in the chamber with the eye spots or the one with plain walls. And they observe for 30 minutes, 60 minute sessions. And we have below the amount of time that the birds spent in the room uh, with the eye spots. And so uh, what we're looking at is a, um, uh, we want to do a hypothesis test, but all we have um, is the data. We don't have any um, sort of starting stuff. So what we first need to do is we need to find the summary statistics of that data. So I'm going to go to my calculator here. Maybe. I'm going to go to my calculator here. There we are. There's our calculator. And I need to enter in the data. So I'm going to go to Stat and choose Edit to enter in the data. It looks like I got some numbers there already. I need to clear those out. So I'm going to move over and up, hit the Clear button, and then the Enter button. And then I need to type in the values that are in that um, in that lane. Let me see if I can adjust my window here so that I can. It doesn't look like it's going to let me. Oh, there we are. Um, I can move my Oops, come back here. All right, so now I can see my data and my calculator at the same time. Um, so I'm going to type in the numbers into the uh, calculator. Uh, let's go down. I guess there was maybe an order if I went. No, there's not an order to these. They're just in there, so it doesn't really matter. All right, enter the data in, and then we want to calculate our summary statistics. Um, actually, a good thing to do is to take a look at your data just to make sure that um, it's appropriate to do a t-test. So I'm going to go up to my stat plot. I'm going to go into plot number one. I'm going to turn it on, and I want to make a histogram. And my data was in list one. Perfect. So I got it set up on the histogram option there. My X list is in what list one. Uh, window, I need to set up the window here. Uh, my values go from a small of 28 to a large of 45, it looks like. So let's go from uh, 25 to 50 and a scale of about two or so. Um, y values should be okay with what's there. And let's look at our graph. And so we see here, slide this back over this way. Um, I don't see anything that really stands out as an outlier. Um, it's roughly kind of some sort of mounded data. Uh, really hard to tell on, on this small set of data if this is a, a symmetric mounded um, graph, but nothing really stands out as a huge outlier or anything. So I think we're safe to go ahead and do our T procedures. And let's calculate our, um, our one variable stats. So if I do my one variable stats here on list one, it gives me my mean is 36.87 uh, and the standard deviation is the 6.11 and my sample size was nine. So let me come back over here and see if I can write those down. Uh, 36.8766. Uh, 
n was equal to 9, and s, the standard deviation of our sample, was 6.1175 all right 6.1175 all right and we do want s we want the standard deviation of the population um, we do not have the the sigma although the calculator shows a sigma the sigma that we're calculating is the sample standard deviation we do not have data from every single bird ever so uh, we have to assume that we've got a random sample here in there. So our S is equal to uh, 61.77. All right, so let's state our hypotheses. My null hypothesis would be we've got a choice of two, two chambers, and we've got a 60-minute session. And so if things are random, um, if there's no difference, then we expect the birds to spend 30 minutes uh, you know, half the time in each of the sessions. That if the the eyes are not influencing the two the two situations, as far as we can tell, um, we're going to assume that that it's 30 there for the average. That they're going to spend half the time in one box versus another box. And then our alternative hypothesis uh, would be that um, what did we record? Here's their data in minutes. Uh, we're looking at um, something about either greater than 30 or less than 30. Um, did we record? Hang on a second. I got to double check on what we. All right. The thing that I was missing is right here that, um, that they recorded the amount of time each bird set, spent in plane chamber and so um, we, we're anticipating if they're avoiding the eyes they're going to spend more time in the plane chamber so mu would be greater than or equal to 60 okay so then let's um, calculate our t statistics that's our second step that we want to do is calculate our t statistic let me get back to having a pen uh, I'm going to calculate my t statistic again it's x bar minus mu divided by s over the square root of n. So I'm going to take 36.8766, subtract 30, divided by um, s, which is 6.1175, over the square root of the sample size, over the square root of 9 in there. All right, so let's go to our calculator and do that operation. Uh, there we are. Yeah, let me see if I can get this to fill up the screen again. Okay, so my T score, I'm going to take the uh, 36 point, no, I've forgotten it, 36.8766. All right. 36.8766 minus 30 divided by my standard deviation, 6.1175 divided by the square root of my sample size, which was 9, not 10, but 9. All right, and note that there's an extra set of parentheses here around the um, denominator because I want to make sure that this division happens before the overall division there. That long division bar is a grouping symbol. And so I get a t-score of 3.3722 or 3.3723. I want to, let's go add this down over here to my notes. Three. 3.2723. How well did I do on memorizing that? That looks right. 
3.3723. I got a 2 there. Okay, so there's our T statistic uh, that tells us that our observation is about three standard deviations above the mean. And then I want to find the P value. The third step in the process is to find the P value. I'm going to use TCDF. I'm going to use the T cumulative distribution function. Uh, I'm looking at an upper tail alternative hypothesis. So I want to go from my T score to infinity. I want to go from 3.3723 to infinity. And with these T's, be sure you use a lot of nines. And then the last thing we want to do is record the degrees of freedom. And with a sample size of nine, I actually have eight degrees of freedom in there. The degrees of freedom is one less than the sample size. So let's get that off of our calculator. Uh, I'm going to go here into um, stats. No, distributions. Right above the variables is distributions. I want to go down to TCDF. I want to go from my answer. I'm just going to use answer to keep all that accuracy in there. Above the negative sign is the answer. It takes your previous answer and types it in for your value. I want to go to infinity and we want to put, so basically put in a really large number um, on our calculator. And on these T ones, you want to include a couple of extra, you want to make it really big. So uh, add plenty of nines there and then eight degrees of freedom. And our p-value there is 0 0.0049, rounding to four decimal places. So back to our thing, 0 0.0049. Uh, and so then we need to make our conclusion. And uh, with a p-value uh, that's very small like this, what conclusion do you think we should make? Do we reject the null hypothesis or do we fail to reject the whole null hypothesis? Remember that the p-value um, is the probability that we can get our sample if the null hypothesis is true. So we've got a very small chance of getting a sample that's with a mean of 36.8 if the birds really spend an equal amount of time in both, uh, both areas. So because our p-value is really small, that's evidence against the null hypothesis. So I would choose to reject. Uh, the null hypothesis. It says that our sample um, certainly at, a, at a, even a 1% significance level um, we have that it's uh, significantly smaller there. All right.